Hello everyone, I'm Fanula. That's Fanula, but I will answer to Hey You if you want to uh, talk to me after. It's a difficult name. Don't bother with the delegate list. The spelling is no help whatsoever for, for knowing how to say it. Um, Alan introduced himself by saying he was going to avoid embarrassing himself. Embarrassing myself is one of my top skills, so I'm just getting that out there from the beginning. I will look a fool at some point, but it's fine. I'm owning it. <laughs> um, so I wanted to come today with uh, kind of Rather than here's the RGU menu, I wanted to establish more of a, a collaborative thing um, and, and demonstrate how interested we are in engaging with professional bodies and their memberships and on this, the CPD subject. So my my little agenda for today, I'll start with a case study. Um, the courses in the case study don't really matter, it's just, it's just the point uh, <coughs> the industry engagement that we're, in, we're trying to make for that one. And then talk a little bit about the existing expertise, very much in a, well, what can we do rather than what is our current menu? Uh, because we are very much interested in engaging and discussing uh, with our, our stakeholders on what could we do rather than what do we currently do. And then I will say, well, we said what, what maybe we can do, here's what we actually do and the delivery modes and the engagement. Um, and if I remember, I will try and address the few questions that Ali had already shared with me as, as being of particular interest to the group. I'll forget a few of them, but we can talk about it after, I'm sure. So our case study. Um, RGU is in Aberdeen. Oil and gas is a big employer of our graduates, but we weren't really doing anything in particular to cater to that audience. They were employing our, our people, and that was fine. Um, but in 2009, a local company approached us looking for a partnership project to establish a membership body specifically for information managers in oil and gas. And one of the potential objectives of that project was to uh, look at the training and education specific to that one industry and whether or not that audience would be interested in the development of specific training. They were, so we uh, developed a very short document control for oil and gas course and it was astonishingly successful. We've had 14 cohorts since 2012, and over a thousand students have gone through that course. We specifically had it be a, an online global course, um, <coughs> so we could meet whatever uh, interest there was around the world. And we're hopefully will develop more there, but as a result of that, it gave other bodies confidence in RGU's ability to engage and to deliver to very specific industry needs and to, um, bring practitioners into the course development process so we had a steering group of advisors who were helping us with that content and submitting examples from industry so it was very much an uh, evidence-based course. Um, that gave other, other bodies confidence and now we've developed a graduate certificate in petroleum data management and that's why I joined RGU specifically to develop that course. So that has started <coughs> A month ago and we've got 20 students on our first intake which is excellent for a course that is catering to a, an industry which is feeling a bit pain with the current oil price. So the courses themselves I don't mean to try and, and promote here but what I wanted to establish was RGU is very very interested in engaging with professional bodies and meeting specific stated needs of practitioners regardless of what we were doing five or ten years ago. So um, the former Department of Information Management, we just had a restructure, but um, is uh, an iSchool. iSchool is an international consortium of academic departments that may have been under library science or information science or data science or whatever, but in the kind of uh, hashtag look apart uh, uh, frame of mind, we can now all um, adopt the iSchool brand and it strengthens our, our visibility to different uh, disparate stakeholder groups. So this is the current set of expertise of my <laughs> colleagues. Uh, if any of them were in the room, they would be saying, well, you've missed my whatever. Um, so this is their kind of our core set. But again, I wanted to show these are the areas in which we could develop new resources. So don't necessarily take the existing module and course list as that's, that's all you'll get from RGU because we're very interested. In, um, in developing that. And that last one, public and private sector information management, the private sector stuff has been very much in the last few years. Um, so we can, we can change this over time according to what our audiences are interested in. Next. 
So our existing courses, we've got two undergraduate uh, courses. Graduate certificates are usually an entry route to postgraduate study for those who don't have an existing undergraduate degree. And that's certainly the, the reason that the information studies one was developed. But the petroleum data management, it just happens to be the appropriate level of qualification. Uh, students who, who undertake a graduate certificate could progress to masters, but um, for new course development, they wouldn't necessarily be assumed to, to want to go in that direction. And then postgraduates, information library studies and information management. We do have some additional modules which are from other courses which have been are in development or suspended at the MSc level, but there's still modules available within them. So our full list of modules, I won't read them out to you, you'll be pleased to hear. Um, I've put the SCQF level to distinguish the ones that are the undergraduate level and postgraduate level. All of these uh, level 11 ones, the postgrad ones, you can study as a standalone module. You don't have to be enrolled on the full MSc, you can just take the one module. You would be forgiven for finding that stated nowhere on our website. Um, we, we put effort into making the modules available and then we kept that secret. <laughs> Um, but yet you can do all of those modules as, as standalone for the level 11 ones. The ones that are hyperlinks are specifically marketed, so they're a bit more obvious as a standalone module, and they're through our uh, um, RGD professional particular CPD marketing thing. So usually the application process for university courses is tedious, but for these ones it's kind of a fast track. You can get in a bit faster, it's a bit more suited to the uh, current practitioner audience. So information and library studies is available on campus. Everything else runs online, including information and library studies. So if you were to take those individual modules, you could study them online. Um, and as I said, some are available as standalone or CPD units. I think one of the questions that Ali shared with me was, uh, can you attend lectures, to basically audit a, an on-campus course. Um, as far as I'm aware, the individual modules are available as the online version only, but <coughs> excuse me, very much in the kind of discussion frame of mind, if we can establish to the powers that be in the university that there is a market for a particular attendance mode, your words are much more powerful than ours are as the staff, we're just their minions. <laughs> if our, if our uh, markets can say, we as a body think that there is, we will use this route or whatever, that will be much more powerful. So one of the things I'd like to do here is, is to start gathering that data so that we can prove to the decision makers that that mode is, is there's a particular audience for that mode. Um, I don't think there was anything else I wanted to say about that. Thanks. Yeah, so very much the, what I want to, you to take away um, from, from this about RGU is that we want to talk to you, we want to engage with you about what your specific needs are and that how are they being met or not met thus far and how can we do that. That doesn't necessarily need funding for that, is if we can develop uh, data demonstrating a sufficient market, we can just go ahead and develop something and we're very interested in uh, becoming more flexible, moving away from the MSC, MSC message and go into the modules and, and uh, they don't have to be full size MSc modules either they can be short courses and different kinds of, of developments. I think there was also a, a question about whether you can study a module but not undertake the assessment at the end of it. You can do that for a small number of modules. You, you would get like a, a letter of, of acknowledgement of your participation but for most of them the university doesn't have a, a means of recording your attendance, you would, you would go down as a fail because you didn't submit your assignment. So again, that's the type of thing that we would really like to gather evidence from the industries to, to show that you want some other means of doing that because I, it's not really fair, I don't think, to, to list you as a fail if you never intended to do the assessment if it was a CPD, <laughs> a CPD item. Um, so yeah, please do shout hey you or have a shot at saying my name as, as we go through the rest of the day. But I've got a few brochures about the information management so you can take one away in business cards. And please talk to us and, and have a look out for, for our efforts to talk to you. We'll be making them um, hoping to move to a much more CPD 
engagement uh, level over the next year. I think we're doing decent with it so far, but we want ever more. So please, yeah, hey you. <laughs> Thank you.